Well, it'll be yeah. interesting, Steve. Boston College really struggled against the Georgia Tech zone. It'll be interesting to see how well they can play against the Syracuse defense. Syracuse will control the opening tip. The Orange coming off their biggest win of the year, beating Virginia on the road in overtime, their first win in Charlottesville in over a decade. So they have some confidence coming back here on their home floor tonight against BC. Man-to-man -man defense for Boston College. And Hughes right to the rack, but a miss. Now Boston College hit with some key injuries. Again, Derek Thornton back tonight after missing two games into the starting lineup. They are still without Nick Popovich, one of their big men inside. But Stephon Mitchell is a guy who leads them in many different categories. He'll be a key cog both offensively and defensively here tonight. Shot clock at four here. Offensive rebound. Resets the shot clock to 20. And Syracuse, not a very deep team this year. And we'll see a lot of these five here tonight, including Hughes, who leads the ACC in minutes played this season. Working it down to Felder, and C.J. Felder comes up short for the Eagles. Syracuse does a nice job with their interior defense when they can collapse on the ball, as they just did. Boston College, not a really good opening start for them. Offensively. And what will be a few things you look for early that could be a good yardstick for how this game develops? I think turnovers and three-point shooting are, are they're going to be the two biggest keys to the game. Neither one of these teams is a great offensive rebounding team. Boston College very solid defensively with a man-to-man. -man. Syracuse, of course, excellent with that zone defense. Shot clock here at three. That's out of bounds. It stays with the orange, but only two to shoot. Jim Beheim in his 44th season, second all-time in wins. Has that national title from 2003, five trips to the Final Four. Syracuse has to give it up quickly. And then it hits the top of the backboard. And BC coached by Jim Christian in his sixth season. Spent two years as the head coach at Ohio, half a dozen years at Kent State. The Mid-American Conference's all-time leader in win percentage before coming here to the ACC. And against the zone defense, particularly this zone defense, the ball has to go inside. And you notice that the Orange, they're playing back inside the three-point line, inside the old three-point line. Boston College not noted for their three-point shooting. And here the shot clock is running down again. And Jay Heath on the miss. No second opportunity this time for Boston College. Eating a lot of that shot clock in their first two offensive possessions. Hughes pulling up. Hughes and we stay scoreless. Hughes has an advantage if he's going to drive the ball all the way to the basket, but Hamilton is big enough and quick enough that if Hughes pulls up for that jump shot off the dribble, Hamilton can bother it as he did that time. Boston College was torched by Georgia Tech at home last weekend. They lost by 19 points in what was their second worst shooting performance of the season. And after having won four in a row, they've now dropped two of three, so could really use a win on the road here tonight. But simply put, Dan, they're just going to have to shoot the ball better. Right, when you don't, when you shoot under 30% from the field and under 17% from three-point range, as they did against Georgia Tech, it's going to be hard to win any games. C.J. Felder here at the free throw line. A freshman from Sumter, South Carolina. Second leading free throw shooter on this team at 81%, but missing on the front end. Has not, has not had a lot of opportunities, but those he has, you're right, Steve, he's been very successful. And I think points are going to be hard to come by for Boston College in this game, and so they're going to have to convert every good opportunity they get. Our first point comes almost three minutes in. Joseph Gerard driving, scoring, and heading to the free throw line to try and complete the three-point play. One of the things you have to keep in mind about Gerard is that he was a prolific high school scorer. This is a guy who knows how to put the ball in the basket. He can do it shooting threes. He can do it, do it drive, driving to the basket. When you put him on the three free throw line, you're just asking for trouble. The leading free throw yep. shooter in the country. That's now 46 of 48 free throws on the season for Gerard.
Thornton against the double team. They swing it around the perimeter. Jarius Hamilton on the miss from straight away. And it's over to the orange. Well, Syracuse struggling out of the gate this year. There were 16 game starts since the 69-70 season. And relying so heavily on their starting five. And Gerard here with the slip and as a result of travel and hobbling too. Well, he may away have turned, from that play. Right. He may have turned his ankle a little bit. Syracuse had a stretch in the middle of the non-conference season where they, they shot the ball extremely poorly for three consecutive games. And again, it, it, the way college basketball is played today, if you shoot the ball poorly, you're really in trouble. And they live and die by the three. And there's no plan B. There's no other path to success for this team. They have to shoot it well. Uh, they're inside game. They've got some big guys in Dolajai and Sidibe, but they are not big offensive players, and they don't really go to them. Here's Thornton with one on the shot clock. <laughs> Stephon Mitchell, the offensive rebound. Mitchell gets knocked down in a foul on Syracuse. Let's go back to Gerard a moment ago with the slip here and rolling that right ankle. And that's really a break for, for Boston College because he was all alone right at the free throw line where he's really good, but that right ankle rolls, and as a result, he moves his pivot foot. Tough break all around. Boston College looking for their first field goal over four minutes into this first half. Got to get inside that defense before you can get the ball outside. They're getting three-point shots, but they're long, long three. Hughes, the long pass ahead, looking for Sidibe out of bounds and over to BC. Light on the scoreboard, just four points up here at the Carrier Dome so far. Ankle surgery back over the holidays, so still hobbling around with that walking boot here tonight at Syracuse. As Steve, Rule 1, Section 1, Article 1 of the rule book says that the objective for each team is to score points and to prevent the other team from scoring points. So we've done okay here preventing your opponent from scoring points, but we haven't gotten the message on this putting the ball in your own basket yet. It's not good news if we haven't even gotten past Rule 1 here tonight. And a shot clock violation. Boston College has been wearing that shot clock down on almost every offensive possession here so far in this first half. Boston College is not a great three-point shooting team. They only shoot 30% as a team on the year from behind the arc. And as a result, if you look at that Syracuse zone, they have it packed back inside. Boston College has to find a way to either make some shots from the perimeter or get the ball inside. Buddy Beheim on the turnaround. Sadibe fighting for the rebound with Felder. And it's last touch by Sadibe, so Boston College ball. Now the Syracuse team really needed that win at Virginia. They had lost two in a row following a three-game winning streak. And would have come in here with a 500 record had they not pulled out the win over the Cavaliers in overtime. They really struggled offensively in Charlottesville. Until and believe the overtime. it or not, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, they scored 20 points in the overtime after scoring only 19 points in the second half. Felder on the miss down low. So you got to go up strong with that basketball. Felder got himself trapped under the basket. And the game's first three finally falls for Buddy Beheim. One of the top three-point shooters in the ACC. Buddy fact, Beheim leads the ACC in three-point baskets made per game, and his teammate Elijah Hughes is second. See, the other thing if you're Boston College, you've got to get back and prevent Syracuse from getting open looks in transition. That was a much better job putting pressure on Beheim. This time a quick transition for Boston College and an offensive foul is called against Jared Hamilton. Well, Saturday, two big games highlight our ACC network schedule. First at 1 Eastern, it's number 9 Florida State. Take it on Miami from Coral Gables. And then in the primetime matchup, Virginia squares off against Georgia Tech in Atlanta at 8 Eastern. Both games right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. So just over six minutes going by, first half, a 6-1 lead for Syracuse. Hey, hey. 
is a very young, inexperienced Syracuse team. And they have certainly had their struggles this season. But not alone in the ACC. So many teams dealing with injuries, roster turnover. It has been a slog for a lot of squads so far as we get into mid-January. Still a lot of basketball left to be played. And teams, you know, you got to put things together early in the season. There's Buddy Beheim driving inside. And that's an offensive foul. So Beheim called for his first. When you shoot the three like Buddy Beheim, people are going to come out and try to chase you off that three-point line. And Beheim does a really nice job here getting past the initial defense, but he's got to make a jump shot, jump stop, and pull up for the jump. Don't have to drive it all the way to the basket. Another missed three. And Riss Wayne is a guy that's got the reputation as a really good shooter. I haven't seen it much. Elijah Hughes has it pop out. Second opportunity. This time Hughes driving. And it's going to go against the Syracuse player who's down. Boy, both of the guys are down. Stephon Mitchell stepping in to try to take that charge. Boston College is not a team that blocks a lot of shots, but they've got guys like Mitchell who will step in, and Mitchell's just standing there waiting for them. Oh, That was a hard fall. Well, he completely sold out. Wasn't able to brace his fall. Now he landed right on his back. And Mitchell's down on the other end. He's he walked down to the other end of the court, but he looks like he's hurting too. He may have cracked his knee with Mitchell's knee. Now check this out once again, Hughes. Getting the second opportunity off the offensive rebound and coming right down Maine. Well, he landed hard on that knee. And it looked like he carried the knee into the chest of Mitchell. So what a mess that was. So Quincy Guerrier, the freshman from Montreal, replaces Hughes. Although it's hard to replace this guy. Hughes, the redshirt junior from Beacon, New York, leading the ACC in minutes played. Syracuse in ACC games has made 52 threes, and Hughes, Beheim, and Gerard have made 51 of them. So that's losing a lot of firepower if you're Syracuse with Hughes going to the bench. Hughes, the second leading scorer in the conference overall. Turnover by the Eagles. Syracuse, of course, they've always in that zone defense with their movement and activity with their hands. They've done a nice job forcing turnovers. Eagle still with not a field goal here. 12 and a half to go first half in the foul against BC. Fouls against Stephon Mitchell. That's a guy BC can ill afford to have in foul trouble. And Merrick Dolajai has done a really, really nice job as his career has gone on. He's become more aggressive with the basketball. In the past, he's been a very reluctant kind of scorer, but the last two plays, he's gotten the ball and he's made moves, and as a result, he's been fouled. Well, he's a junior from Slovakia, played for them at the under-20 Euros, but doesn't necessarily play like a European no, player, does he? he? He's the anti-European player. He does not shoot the three. In fact, he doesn't really look to score that much at all. But as I said, he's doing a better job being more aggressive this year. He led the team in rebounding in the win at Virginia, pulling 11 off the boards. Gerard wanted a deflection on the shot that went out of bounds. They're going to say that no one touched it, so it's BC ball. Well, that was that was right in front of it. It sure looked like Jarius Hamilton got a finger on that one. Boston College 0 of 9 from the field, 0 of 5 from downtown. Eight minutes already gone by first half. Stephon Mitchell finally gets their first field goal, the junior from Minnesota. But again, I think if you're Syracuse, you're very comfortable with Stephon Mitchell shooting an 18-foot jump shot. He is a very, very good player, but that is not really his offensive game. Coming off his 11th career double-double in a loss to Georgia Tech, had 10 and 11 in that game over the weekend. Shot clock and single digits for the Cues. 
Gerard goes into the BC bench. Buddy Bayon puts it up with two on the clock. Shot clock resets to 20, and it's tipped out of bounds and stays with the orange. They're on the inside, but it'll be interesting what to see what Louisville can do with Trey Jones because Trey Jones does such a great job getting the ball where it needs to go for the Blue Devils. Now just over 11 minutes left to go first half. And Dan, it might take a while, but I guarantee you we'll get to double digits in scoring between these two teams combined at some point. Just not there yet. Only 6-3. And three to shoot for Syracuse. Gerard, as the buzzer sounds. And the Eagles out in transition. Rishwain just has to save it in and right to Buddy Behar. Gerard, transition three. And that's exactly, in a game like this, what you need to do. You need to get out and get some easy baskets in transition. Both offenses struggling against the set defense. And that time, Boston College is too loose with the basketball, trying to get out in transition. And as a result, they give one away. Joseph Girard, his first three-point basket of the night. Second for Syracuse as a team. Boston College trying to get out and go. And Girard, we said, he scored 4,700 points in high school. So this guy can score. He can score from outside. He can score taking it to the basket. He's very good with that three in transition. And there's a steal by Jay Heath. Picks the pocket of Girard for an easy rolling. Boston College does a nice job stealing the ball. On the season, they're plus 32 in steals against their opponents, and they've got to get some more opportunities like that. We hit the midpoint of the opening half. Four-point lead for the home squad. Dolajai on the spin, and he's fouled on the shot. A nice adjustment offensively by Syracuse, trying to take the ball inside. They're, they're not a team that usually worries about trying to get it down on the interior, but Dolajai has seen some mismatches and has tried to take advantage. 65% free throw shooter. And a guy who played in foul trouble on the road at Virginia this weekend. He had four fouls and played about 13 minutes without picking up his fifth. So a very disciplined performance to help Syracuse get into overtime and then get the win. Dolajai fouls a lot. He's got 52 fouls on the year. He's actually fouled out five times. So Dolajai being in foul trouble isn't a news flash, but you're right, very important for a veteran guy to be able to play with those fouls. That's because Sadibe fouled out, so. Can't have both of them on the bench. And Trying to get the, the bar inside against the zone. Nice pass by Mitchell. Mitchell, one of the top assist guys for Boston College. So Barama Sadibe with his second personal foul. He's upset as he comes over to the bench. And Jesse Edwards, the 6'11 freshman, replaces him. Not pretty basketball right at the moment when you have more than twice as many turnovers as you do field goals. Shot clock at seven here. Jared Hamilton couldn't get it to fall. That's nice to get it inside to Hamilton, but he's a little bit too small to do much with it in there. Dolajai with the miss on the other end. Syracuse here's where, now one for their last here's eight. Here's where you have to take advantage if you're Boston College. You gotta get it into scoring position quicker. And that's C.J. Felder finishing for the Eagles. They're really high on Felder at Boston College because of his explosiveness, and he showed some right there. Just took that ball right to Evans. Funny looking shot, but Boston College will take any looking shot right now. Now Felder had 13 points in the loss to Georgia Tech to lead the team, and also had a season high seven rebounds in that game. Seven to shoot. Dolajai with the buzzer sounding has it pop out from three. Boston College man-to-man -man defense has been very good when they've been able to get it set. And Stephon Mitchell drawing the blocking foul on Jesse Edwards, who had just checked in. And again, what you see is Boston College getting the ball up the court quickly, and Evans, who's just come in the game, is a little bit slow reacting to that pass down to Mitchell. And Mitchell's not a jump shooter, but he'll take the ball to the goal. 
He can be a handful on the inside. Heath corrals that against two orange players. Thornton finds Mitchell. He scopes out a three, but it's long. Mitchell's only a 22% three-point shooter on the year. And Boston College now 0 of 6 from three-point range. Heath is going to pick up that foul, and if you're Jay Heath, you just got to shake your head with that one because that was a tough pass. Even if Evans catches that, he's not a very experienced player, has not played very many minutes this year. I just don't know that he would have been able to get stopped to score a basket. You didn't have to hold on to him. And as a result, that's two personals. He comes out. Julian Rishwain checks back in. The freshman from Los Angeles. And Heath, the freshman from D.C., takes a seat. And he has been one of the most important players, has Heath, for Boston College as Hughes comes back in the game. Gary A. and Gerard both leave, but... Just when they get Thornton back, now they have Hughes in foul trouble. Or excuse me, uh, Heath in foul trouble. Just north of eight minutes left to go, first half. The lead is four for the Cues. Buddy Beheim, long three, and he connects for his second triple of this first half. He's got some great range. Boston College just didn't push out far enough on him that time. And Jim Christian, at he told his guys, you've got to get out on it. Last year, Buddy Beheim had two terrific games against Boston College. Had 13 points in the first meeting to tie his career high. Then had a career best 16 points in the second go-round. As Syracuse won both encounters with the Eagles last season. Shot clock at three. Thornton, the long jump shot. Tipped around, and Beheim has it. This time, Beheim driving inside and banks it home. Buddy Beheim leading all scores here with eight points really and good job. seven minutes to go. Really good job in transition against Mitchell. Syracuse trying to grow this nine-point lead. Beheim again. Back-to-back -back baskets off glass and in for Buddy Beheim. First player into double figures. He's got ten. Well, as we... Dr. Dan Naismith published the rules, but... And the original rules, you weren't allowed to dribble. Yeah. Just carried the ball. Passed it. And just worked it around. And there were no there were no free throws. Oh, my. Jarius Hamilton, long three and a bad miss. Uh, that's a bad shot. Meantime, Buddy Beheim has it blocked by Jarius Hamilton. Not letting his offensive woes affect his defense. Now, Beheim just had two great drives to the basket. He was trying for a third. C.J. Felder had it knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. Well, 1892 featured several historical milestones. Check this out. You had Grover Cleveland, who was elected as the 24th president of the United States. Of course, he was also the 22nd president of the United States. Elected twice, you're right. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes was first published by Arthur Conan Doyle. Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker Sweep premiered. And the Boston Bean Eaters won the National League. And of course, that predates the World Series, which played its first edition in 1903. And not to be forgotten, the Stanley Cup was first introduced. No one drinking from the cup here tonight, but Syracuse starting to run away with this one, now up 21-7 with under six to go first half. Syracuse defense has been very aggressive. Boston College just cannot find any openings. That's the first opening they have found. And that, that was, the whole thing was created by the strength of Felder inside. There was a double team. He managed to get the ball out of the double team, find the open man. Elijah Hughes coming back after the hard fall earlier. Went to the bench for a few minutes. Now back and charging inside. Even when you're playing zone, when you get a double team, somebody's got to be open. And Washington just missed Hamilton. Washington was not in the proper position. He's looking at the ball. He never sees Hamilton coming from behind. But a great job by Felder to have the strength to get through that double team without losing the ball. 
Felder has played every game so far this season for Boston College, while Hughes settles in here at the free throw line for two. Syracuse has done a nice job after a slow start offensively, taking on the offensive end what the Boston College defense is giving them. If the BC is pushing out on the threes, Bayheim and Hughes are driving past to the basket. If they have the opportunity in transition, they've knocked them down in transition. And that's something the team also did in the recent win over Virginia. They were more patient with the ball, more selective on offense, not forcing it as much. Five minutes to go, first half. Commanding margin for the Orange here at home. There just aren't any shooters in the game for Boston College right at the moment. Shot clock at five. Struggling to find a good look. Amari Williams, the deep three and the rebound by Felder. An emphatic follow. He missed the last half of last season. His senior year in high school because of an injury, but came out as the fourth best player out of the state of South Carolina. Dolajai loses it on the way up, but he's fouled. Well, it's been a struggle for Boston College on the offensive end, but Felder just attacks the boards right there. Jesse Evans, number 14, is just overmatched. And Evan, excuse me, Edwards has not played very much this year, and he's a guy that doesn't have a lot of strength. He's in the game right now because Sidibe is in foul trouble. But he just got overpowered by Felder. Dolajai here at the free throw line. Stands 6'10". Doesn't have a big frame. I'd like him to get a little stronger to handle the contact inside, absorb some of that physical action. But a very smart player, good passer for this Syracuse team. Here's Thornton launching the three. Edwards had it ripped out of his hands by Stefan Mitchell, and he's fouled on the shot. Again, you see Edwards has the ball, but he just simply doesn't have the strength to hold it. And Mitchell, you're right, just ripped it out of his hands. And so Sidibe is going to come back in the game. Coming back in with his two personal fouls. Jim Beheim was immediately off the bench after that play to call Sidibe off the bench and get him ready to check in. And Stephon Mitchell here at the free throw line. And we've got our next women's college basketball doubleheader tomorrow and two great matchups here on ACCN at 6 Eastern. It's number nine, NC State, hosting number 13, Florida State. And then Notre Dame faces Duke and Cameron Indoor. Both games right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. So Mitchell gets one of two. But Boston College still struggling mightily on offense all around. Five of 22 from the field and 0 of 10 from three-point range with four minutes to go in the half. And Howard Washington has played a lot of minutes here for Syracuse in the first half. Buddy Beheim falls down on the three-point attempt. No foul, but he gets the basket. And they just, they just, they're gonna give Syracuse a warning for a flop. Beheim made the basket, but he fell down looking for the foul. And the referee just gave the flop signal. So at the first dead ball, they're going to go over and issue the flop warning up to Syracuse. Beheim three of four from three-point range now. Top three-point shooter in the game. And also the leading scorer on both teams with 13 points as Hughes gets into the paint and scores. And that's a place where Hughes has really improved his game. Last year, 67% of his shots were three-point field goals, and that number is down to around 50%. So he's doing a much better job in the mid-range and taking the ball to the goal. Stephon Mitchell on the turnover. And Hughes, the easy flush. And a timeout, Boston College. Three minutes to go, first half. Elijah Hughes was down, injured earlier, but he is back. You would expect the leading three-point shooter in the Atlantic Coast Conference to get it to light it up from downtown. He has. He's knocked down three of them, but he's also scored a couple of times in transition, taking the ball hard to the basket. He's not noted as a guy who scores a lot off the drive, but he's played very well tonight. 13 points, two rebounds. He's got an assist. He's got a steal. And the big three scoring all but four of the team's points. 
Cody Beheim, second on this team in scoring, averaging 15 per game. He had 14 in the win on the road at Virginia last weekend. Here's Felder down low. And an important thing to note, Steve, Joseph Girard is still sitting over on the Syracuse bench. I don't know whether that ankle that we saw him roll has acted up or not. Hughes coming up short, gets his own rebound. Sadibe, they just can't handle that inside. Sadibe, too tall, too strong. They don't normally look for Sadibe inside, but he's a guy throughout his career, when he's been healthy, has shown the ability to catch the ball and make some moves on the interior. Largest lead for Boston College, 22 points. Can't buy one. Uh, they're not three-point shooter Jay Heath on that last miss. They're not getting good ones. Dolajot pulling up and banking it in. And Syracuse is. The Syracuse team that does so much of their offensive damage from the outside, really finding a way to get in tight, score from down low, and building on this huge margin with a minute and a half left to go here in the first and stay tuned for the State Farm halftime report as we've got a preview of the Duke Louisville matchup and we also look ahead to Notre Dame go, and Georgia Tech following us here tonight on the ACC network Joseph Gerard still sitting there after making a three-pointer earlier but as he pulled up to take a jump shot at the free throw line he slipped rolled his ankle and has been sitting on the bench Foul against the orange where the Orange defense continues to be very active, playing really hard, moving very effectively to the ball. That was one of the few times we've seen anybody drive through that defense. Rich Wayne was able to do it, but wasn't able to get the ball to the basket. Jay Heath at the free throw line, hits on the front end. And Syracuse is coming off a pair of back-to-back -back games where they've been pretty solid defensively. And the question, I guess, Dan, is can this continue? Can they add this robust defense to their three-point shooting as the conference season unfolds. They're always going to be good defensively because that zone defense, particularly as active as Syracuse is and the great adjustments that they make during the defense is a hard thing to go against. The key for Syracuse is whether they can put the ball in the basket, and they've done that here throughout most of the latter part of the first half. Sadibe trying to back in. Seven to shoot for Hughes. Back-to-back -back three point misses for him and the other thing that Syracuse has done they've gotten back very effectively on defense There's an example of it. They take it away and Beheim with the finish with under a minute to play in the first half Boston College trying to run but Syracuse reacting very well gets the steal another easy basket And that's the difference in the game Syracuse has gotten easy ones Boston College simply has not Derek Thornton, their leading scorer on the miss. Yeah, but he's a 25% three-point shooter. you got to get closer if you're Boston College, and that's much easier said than done against the Syracuse defense. This Eagle team just cannot find an avenue for any productive offense. With the shot back off, Syracuse holding for the final attempt. Hughes into the quarter, and Howard Washington scoping out the three. went but as has been the pattern for Boston College a miss from the field for the Eagles now uh, what back in the game because remember Syracuse at times has struggled to score not in this game <laughs> but during the season this is the first of a three game road trip for Boston College they have lost two of their last three since winning four in a row so they need something to get going and that's not a good start. Jarius Hamilton with a quick miss on the opening possession of the second half. Well, and I just don't think that's what they wanted to do. Jarius Hamilton, he is a 26% three-point shooter. He's now 0 for 3 from beyond the arc in this game. I think Syracuse would love him to take that shot every time down. Meantime for the Eagles, taking a lot of shots that don't make a lot of sense. Dolajai missed the chippy. Now you have a transition opportunity, but again, Syracuse gets four guys, now five back very quickly. The other thing for Boston College is Heath sat a long time in that first half with fouls. And Heath misses on the three here. 
And that's tipped out by Stefan Mitchell of Boston College. We talk about Boston College needing to get out and go, but that's difficult if a team drops back. Syracuse has three guys back right now. Sidibe's running into the picture, so it's actually a four on three in favor of the defense. Hughes left wide open for a three. And the race for it to the sideline, and it'll stay with Syracuse. Now, Syracuse is not a great offensive rebounding team, but Sidibe and Dolajai are among the leaders in the ACC in offensive rebound. And yeah, they're both top three. Buddy Beheim all the way to the rack and scores. Well, as you mentioned, Dan, Syracuse not a great rebounding team, but why is it that you could have two guys that are so proficient, though, on the offensive glass? Well, I think this zone defense... The zone defense that they play creates a lot of transition opportunities with their steals, and I think they run the court so well that they get the opportunities in transition on the offensive court. Now, finally, Jarius Hamilton gets that one to drop. But where did Jarius Hamilton shoot that ball? He was right in the lane in between the ACC logo and the restricted area line. They just do not score much from inside the paint. Boston College in the loss at home to Georgia Tech over the weekend gave up a season high 42 points in the paint to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's got those big guys, Banks and Moses, right? And they throw on the ball. You see a little bit undersized. That's a hard matchup for Boston College. Here's Felder getting fouled. One of the things I liked about that game at Boston College, they had trouble in the first half with some moisture on the court, and it turned out they were using a wet mop to try and clean it up, so it kept getting worse and worse, didn't it? Yes, it did, but they figured that one out quickly. <laughs> what BC couldn't figure out was how to get the ball to go in the goal, and that's their problem here tonight. And C.J. Felder, and he scores from down in tight. And that's an area that many times in the Syracuse zone is open, but they've put enough pressure on the ball tonight on the perimeter that that's been hard to find. Sidibe picked up two personals in the first half, sat for a while. Sidibe is a guy, he's going to get tied up there. The possession arrow favors Syracuse. But Sidibe is a guy who, when he gets, now they reset the shot clock, and they should not have. But Sidibe, if he can get the ball and make a quick move, he's fine on the inside. They put the shot clock back to 16, but if he's got to dribble in a while, then he's in trouble. Junior from Mali went to prep school in New Jersey. Fouled out of the last game, the win at Virginia. Trying to avoid the same fate here tonight. And nothing but nets every Sunday is our weekly basketball studio show. We preview the week and look back at the best games from last week with highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide. That's Sunday at 8 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Well, Boston College not worried about net. They'll take anything that goes in the cylinder at this point. Nothing but net, though, for Buddy Beheim, who continues as the game's high score. Now up to 17 on the evening. Steve, it's unusual for Buddy Beheim to drive the ball all the way to the basket, but it's not unusual for him to make that move that he just made. Drives his defender into the lane, stops and gets that nice little mid-range jump shot. Jay Heath, uh -oh. another miss. And Dolajai scrambling. Got loose in the air there, almost took a hard fall. But able to save it. But Dolajai not only gets the ball on the defensive end, but watch he dribbles behind his back. He creates an opportunity just to just head straight down the lane. Remember, we talked about how the fact that he was very shy offensively early in his career, but now as a junior, he's become much more aggressive. And a perfect five for five from the free throw line here tonight. And he's a guy who doesn't normally shoot it very well from the line. Top free throw shooter on either team here this evening. Just over three minutes deep, second half. Big lead for the Qs. And if Boston College was looking to get off to a real quick start in the second half, the Syracuse defense has not allowed them to, but there is Derek Thornton with a mid-range jump shot. And he's their leading scorer, but that's his first bucket of the night. 
Coming back from missing two games because of an ankle injury, and averaging 13 points per contest this season, and finally getting on the board. Hughes answers on the other end, though, for Syracuse. And this is a problem for BC. If you're trying to make a comeback, you're going to have to gamble a little bit on the defensive end, and that's going to give some opportunities to guys like Hughes and Beheim and Girard who can really shoot the ball. Yeah, the calculus just does not favor Boston College when you add it up like that. I, I can't imagine that the Boston College coaching staff told Jerry Hamlin to go out there and shoot three. This time Hughes takes it inside and scores. And a timeout taken by Jim Christian and Boston College. The lead swelling for the home team. Now 48-19, Orange. People don't want to talk about it. However, if you're part of the hair club for men, something like that, you are not invited. You are not welcome as part of the bald men on campus program. Here's Jared Hamilton coming out of the timeout and hitting. That's a nice job to get inside to get that mid-range jump shot. We saw Thornton do it. Now we've seen Jared Hamilton do it. Question is, can Boston College string together some stops on this end of the court? Have not done so with any consistency to this point. Coming up on the five-minute mark of the second half, eight to shoot. Dolajai trying to go over the top of the backboard here. And... <laughs> Like a trick <laughs> shot at the end of practice. <laughs> of his patented moves, taking it into the lane, getting stopped, turning around, and shooting that turnaround jump shot. We showed you at halftime he was outscoring BC, and Boston College has at least altered that perspective, but the Eagles still struggling to shoot the ball. Yeah, things taking still a turn for the worst. Three. Oh, for, for Buddy Behan. 18. Last time Boston College won a full game without making a three was 2009, so it's been over a decade. But that's the path they're on right now. So here they get a steal, but they're not able to get down and get a real easy basket in transition because Syracuse does a great job dropping back. 25% from the field altogether. Felder down low. We talked about Derek Thornton and his importance to the team. That's one of the things we talked about, the ability to get the ball inside the zone and get it to the right guy. That was a good pass and a great catch by Felder. Gerard back in the game for Beheim. Strong rebound taken back up and put back in. Gary A, that, those are his first two points of the game, and he's actually played pretty well for Syracuse. He has been like the sixth guy. They actually played the Orange did eight guys in the first half, which is unusual. Okay, they Finally, have made a three. First three-point basket belongs to Julian Rishwain, the freshman from Los Angeles. Oh, coming right back the other way. Nobody on Gary A, and Quincy Gary A scores for the second time in a row. Well, they went for the steal, and they didn't get it. And when you go for the steal, that's the risk you take. One of the things they want out of Gary A, rebounding, <laughs> scoring near the basket. And how about that defense near the basket? And he comes away with the rebound as well. Part of the Canadian National Youth Program coming from Montreal. Gary A making an impact here. Strong athletic kid with a lot of upside. Gary A runs very well. And this, this, I mean, I thought that ball was going over his head, but he's physically ready to play. His offensive game is still developing. He's still learning how to play, but he's very active. He's a very effective offensive rebounder. And obviously, he has the physical tools. One of the things he's been trying to adapt to is a high school competition in Canada was it anywhere near what he's facing now at the collegiate level here in the States. Bodies on the floor here, the scramble. Rish Wayne on the bottom, falling with Dolajai. And it's going to be Boston College basketball. But Jim Beheim is, his team is ahead by 26 points, and he is still working the officials. Guess you got to stay in practice. Does he ever stop? No, you don't. You don't want to get. Uh, you don't want to get out of out of practice. No, still on his feet. Don't want to get stale. Still doing what he does. <laughs> That's a good pass inside by Mitchell, and Hamilton just not able to finish. But he was trying to finish through traffic. Dolage and Garrier both went after that. Joseph Gerard 
rolled that ankle back in the first half, but he comes back with his second three-pointer in the second half of play. Boy, what a stroke he has. Jared Hamilton. Jared, the older of the two Hamilton brothers. Behan just does not look happy on the bench. Rishway behind the back pass and Thornton with the finish. I think that might be the first fast break basket that Boston College has been able to get after a turnover. Under 12 left to go. But the lead still 25. Boston College continues to play in the man-to-man. Hughes just shoots right over the top of Derek Thornton. Syracuse doing a nice job moving the defense around. And again, when you've got guys who can finish an offensive sequence like Hughes and Beheim and Girard, it's awfully difficult to mount a comeback. He's not able to get enough stops, especially when you're in a hole like this. This way, had that one partially deflected. Second opportunity. They're getting several cracks at it here, and finally the finish by Williams. And they finished, and, and that's a, that, if for Boston College, that's a small victory, but Syracuse did a great job contesting those shots close to the basket. Jim Beheim not happy they gave up a couple of offensive rebounds, but nothing easy for BC tonight. And a traveling violation on Buddy Beheim right in front of the Syracuse bench. As we approach the midpoint of the second half, I've always wanted to ask you what your favorite condiment is, Dan. It's a great segue. I go with the ranch myself. How can it be anything other than ketchup? <laughs> Eight to shoot, Rishwain lets fire. Now that was a really good play by Rishwain, a tough shot because Buddy Beheim came out there and defended that pretty well. Syracuse, despite the fact that they have the big lead, they are still being very active in the zone. Rich Wayne, third on this team in three-point percentage at 33% on the season. Well, Rich Wayne comes in with a guy, as a guy with a reputation as a great high school shooter. And lots of times when guys have that reputation, it takes them a little bit of while, a little while to get rolling. And Buddy Beheim is a perfect example. He started very slowly last year, but shot the ball much better in ACC play. What's the trick to get it going? When does it take so long? Well, just when the game slows down a little bit for you. Three to shoot here. Hughes to Dolajai on the spin at the buzzer. I, I have been very impressed with Dolajai. Not necessarily the fact that he's scoring a lot of points, but that he's looking to score. In the past, he has been a very reluctant kind of scorer, but not so tonight, and not so in the games recently where I've watched him. He's the third orange player into double figures, now with ten. And now that's two three-point baskets for Boston College here in this second half as they finally start to connect. Chris Heron, the junior from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. And Chris Heron is a guy, another guy with a reputation as a three-point shooter. He has struggled throughout his BC career to get him to go down. There. And here's a foul on Syracuse. I says Rish Wayne. He was trying to guard Gary A. I can understand why he'd be holding on. Gary A'd be a hard guy to card. Buddy Beheim missing on the long three. Hughes had to go off his fingertips, but Beheim this time a more open look, and he's not going to miss that. His fourth three-point basket of the night. Boy, he does not need a lot of room or time. Game high score with 22 points. So Chris Herrick now bringing the ball up. And Beheim has obviously made threes, but his offense has not simply been limited to the three-point line tonight. And nearly a turnover, but Hughes kicked it out of bounds. 
Well, we've got our next women's basketball doubleheader coming up tomorrow with two great matchups. First at 6 Eastern, it's number 9 North Carolina State hosting number 13 Florida State. And then Notre Dame goes against Duke at Cameron Indoor. Both games right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. That ball is tipped and it stays with Boston College. You wonder why it's hard to get going as a three-point shooter as a freshman in college while you're facing defensive pressure like that. When you're shooting in high school, you normally didn't see that. So many players say that the speed of the game when you get to college is something that even though they try to prepare for, you just can't fully acclimate until you play several games, until you go through that process. Anytime you move up a level in basketball, the game is, is a little faster. And so you have to adjust. And by faster, I mean the decisions are faster. Players are all bigger and stronger. So it just takes a little while to adjust sometimes. And so many kids who got away with just being the most talented on their high school teams. They have to find another dimension. Felder off the offensive rebound. Boston College really hungry on that offensive glass, but coming up empty. We're not going to get better opportunities than that. Boston College is struggling everywhere tonight. And there's a foul on the Eagles. Well, as we continue, we'll take a look at the youngest member of the Syracuse team. We'll take a look at that young man when we bring you back to the Carrier Dome. Entry to the team. They've all embraced him, however, and he's really become a huge part of this basketball community. And Bol Ajak went to high school near Philadelphia, so uh, they're Eagles fans, and that's why it's not like he was watching the Eagles on direct TV in the Sudan. Joseph Girard connecting on another three point basket for Girard, his third triple of the night. And the fourth Syracuse player into double figures. And for Gerard specifically, that's his ninth consecutive game in double digits. Jared Hamilton hits a three on the other end. Well, Hamilton, one of the best three-point shooters for Boston College, even though for his career he's not a great three-point shooter, but he's shot the ball much better from out there this year. Buddy Beheim. Oh, That's a tough miss. shot, and Beheim hadn't taken too many of those tonight. Beheim continuing to pace all scores with 22 on the evening. Under 70 minutes left to go. Bad turnover by Heron, who just threw it away. Now for Syracuse, this is their last home game in a span where they played six of seven here at the Carrier Dome. We'll go on the road to play at Virginia Tech on Saturday. That could be a tough game. Really could be a tough game. The Hokies are playing very well. Keep in mind that Virginia Tech was picked to finish 15th in the ACC. And they have surprised everybody under new coach Mike Young. They play a style that relies heavily on the three-point basket. They're very small. <laughs> yeah. Hughes at the free throw line here. Heath, by the way, with that last foul, it's his fourth personal for Boston College. And as we take you around the ACC, not just Virginia Tech and Syracuse, but how about some of the news on the other squads? Well, North it's Carolina, Duke, and Virginia. Well, Virginia fell out of the top 25 because they lost two games last week. Duke suffered that upset by Clemson. But even though there are not a lot of ACC teams ranked in the top 25, that doesn't mean there's a lot of easy marks in this conference, particularly when you go on the road. You have to play well or you're going to come away with a loss. We're talking about Virginia Tech. They're only a game out of first place in the conference right at the moment. That'll be an interesting battle between the Syracuse zone defense and the Virginia Tech ability to shoot the three. Is Virginia Tech for real? How far can they take this hot start? Uh, I, I think absolutely they're for real because they have guys, they play very hard on the defensive end. They play very well together. They pass the ball very well, and they are a very dangerous three-point shooting team. That'll be a good game this weekend, as well as Duke and Louisville, the prime matchup in the ACC. And when you look ahead at potential NCAA tournament teams, it's never too early to look ahead, even though it's only mid-January. These are the BPI odds to make the dance. 
You see these six teams, and then it's a big drop off after that. No other ACC squad has above a six and a half percent chance. Now, anybody who's ever played in a fantasy football league knows that predictions are simply a guess, and so there's still a lot of basketball left to be played. But you know, what you have to do is you got to win games, and that's what Virginia Tech has been doing. That's why their odds and their standing have risen significantly recently because they've won games. And for the Syracuse team, sure, they've had their ups and downs so far this season, but over the years, they have been a team that's made late runs in the second half of the season, and they're going to hold on tonight for their second win in a row to go to 10-7. and seven. Part of the problem that we have is we talk about the NSA tournament. We start talking about it in November, that this is a big game for the NSA tournament, and that's because of the metrics that we use now. Every game counts, and I think that's good. It forces teams to play stronger schedules, but one of the things that it penalizes is a team that gets off to a slow start, where you just have to piece things together, and then the team gets rolling at the end of the season. Well, what they did early in the season really counts strongly against them. And that's, I don't know if there's any way you fix that problem. His hair hits another three, but Sometimes teams that are playing really well at the end of the year just took them a while to put things together And there's very little way to recognize that the way we do the metrics and the NCAA tournament selections in this day and age What do you think about that because you really want teams that are playing at their best to fill out the field in the NCAA tournament, right? Well, you do but the, the, the NCAA as a group coaches the NCAA tournament committee They decided that what they want to do is look at what you've done all year long a couple of years ago, you had a situation where Oklahoma, with Trey Young, played really well early in the season and played very poorly down the stretch, but the fact that they played really well early in the season saved them. Stephon Mitchell here at the free throw line for Boston College. And it's particularly tough for young teams, for teams that are trying to replace key starters, that sometimes it just takes a while to put things together, but... That's just life in college basketball these days. But it's much better than the days when the big boys used to literally play nobody sure. and then go even in their conference and be and have these inflated win totals. Now this year we opened up the season with ACC games on the first night. And there was something to be said for the body of work over the full season. But teams so often are in a position where you're trying to figure things out, develop that chemistry and rhythm that only comes sometimes after the holidays. But regardless of what the metrics say in terms of whether you're going to get into the NCAA tournament or not, you go on the road in this league, every team is good enough to beat you. That's Bryson Goodine, the freshman, playing his first game since December the 28th. Broke his nose in practice. That's why he's wearing that mask. A high school state champion in Massachusetts coming from New Bedford. Now, having those masks, I think that's better than nothing. But if you get hit in the nose, even with that mask still hurts, on, right? you're going to feel it. Still hurts. Like those old goalie masks they used to wear in hockey <laughs> that were just kind of plastered to their face. I mean, you tell me you take a puck off a slap shot, that's not going to hurt? And Syracuse has led since the opening minutes. And remember, Syracuse got off to a very slow start offensively in this game, but once they heated up, they really heated up. Yeah, these two teams had only nine points combined with about 12 minutes left to go in the first half. And what this big lead has done is it's given Jim Beheim a chance to put some of his guys on the bench who normally play tons of minutes and give them a little bit of rest. And because this is not a very deep team, they are thin, not much bench play. Elijah Hughes leads the ACC in minutes played, so any chance for a breather is a welcome one. Well, Gary A is not a great three-point shooter, but he is the one member of the Orange who has made a three in ACC play other than the big three of Bayheim, Hughes, and Girard. That's Jay Heath on the basket for Boston College, playing the four personal fouls. Well, Heath, foul problems have really hurt him tonight. Heath is a much better player than he has shown so far and has been key to Boston College in their early conference success. It's hard for them to get much done if Heath is going to struggle. Good eye all <laughs> wrap around. Gets the reverse to drop.
just been one of those lost nights for Boston College, and you have them uh, in college basketball. Now these teams will meet again on March the 3rd. A rare three-point basket. Jarius Williams that time for Boston College. Well, Bryson Goodine, the freshman from Massachusetts, hadn't played a lot lately, but coming on and making an impact here. A couple of baskets here. Saturday, two big games highlight the ACC network schedule at 1 Eastern. Number nine, Florida State faces Miami down in South Florida. And then in our primetime matchup, it's Virginia against Georgia Tech in Atlanta at 8 Eastern. Both games here on the ACC network and the ESPN app. Hall of Fame coach Jim Beheim. A lot to like about his team's performance here tonight. Big evening for the Q's. And speaking of the Hall of Fame, big day for the Hall of Fame as well. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Dan, I know you were excited hearing that Nine Inch Nails and the Notorious B.I.G. were inducted. That's, that's certainly, that's made my, you made my day. Don't forget the Doobie Brothers also included. Whitney Houston made it as well. They celebrated by taking it to the streets. The Doobie Brothers did. Howard Washington here driving for the Qs. And the Eagles coming the other way with numbers. Heron looking for his third three. This Eagle team started 0 of 19 from three-point range. And since, they're now 6 of 10. So they do have one more meeting coming up, as I mentioned, early March. What's going to be the big takeaway for Jim Christian and this Eagles team when they look ahead of that next go-round? Yes. Well, I, I, you know, this is one you just wipe out because they played really poorly. And I think what they have to do is they've got to figure out ways as they move the ball to try to get some open, to try to make some open shots. I thought that early in the game they took threes that maybe they didn't have to take with a couple of passes. They could have gotten some mid-range jumpers because that Syracuse zone was really packed. Yeah. But again, if a couple of those threes go down, it's a different kind of game, but they're not shots that Boston College normally makes, so it was advantage Syracuse forcing them to take that kind of shot. Boston College led a 1-0, but ever since, it's been all Syracuse. Now the 26-point lead with 121 left to go. Right now, if you're Boston College, the, the game just can't be over fast enough. Yeah, Syracuse empties the bench here. It's rare that you can do this in any ACC game. But it's tough to play on the road. It'll be a different story when Syracuse has to go to the Conti Forum. Boston College in the first of a three-game road trip themselves. They'll play at Wake Forest coming up on Sunday while Syracuse heads to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech this Saturday. And remember, Virginia Tech has already beaten Syracuse here in the Carrier Dome this year. Another thing that the Syracuse defense has done very well today, they've taken Stephon Mitchell totally out of the game. Mitchell's a guy who gets a lot of rebounds. He gets a lot of assists. He steals the ball. Just hadn't been able to pull that off today. He was coming off a double-double in the game against Georgia Tech, but he has been shut down here this evening. Final half minute. What's the long-term potential for this Syracuse team this season, having seen them several times now? What's your outlook? Well, you know, I think that, again, they're, they're, they're in a very tough situation with that other teams in the league are either right about the same skill level as they are or better. So as long as I think they make shots, as long as they get big offensive efforts from Bayheim and from Gerard and from Hughes, and as long as guys like Dolajai and Sidibe can hold the fort inside, I think that particularly when they're playing here at home, they could be a formidable foe. Again, there's an awful lot of, it's very even, whoever four through 15 is in the ACC. Very even. It's a 26-point win. The 50th victory for Syracuse over Boston College in their long history between the two schools. The Orange placing four players in double figures led by Buddy Bayheim's game-high 22 points.